So, Intel Optane has been out for a little while now, but its position in the market is almost just as confusing as ever. A lot of the PC community thought Intel would be using its revolutionary 3D crosspoint technology to make blazing fast, high capacity storage drives, but then Optane came out and that's not what it was. It was essentially a streamlined version of Intel's smart response technology, using a solid state memory cache to accelerate traditional drives. Well, this wasn't exactly what enthusiasts were looking for, but it has the potential to be very useful in budget builds and other things in the future. So since most of the tech world has had a chance to weigh in on Optane, let's answer the question. What the heck is the deal with Optane anyway? Right after the intro. Working across multiple computers is a messy process. It's way too easy to click and type on the wrong system, which can cause unnecessary stress and frustration. But we found a solution. Synergy. Synergy is a software application that lets you control multiple devices with just one mouse and keyboard. You can drag and drop files, share your clipboard, and more across Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Find out more and get 50% off using the link in the description. So first off, what is 3D Crosspoint anyway, and what's so revolutionary about it? Like the name implies, 3D Crosspoint uses a three-dimensional structure, with columns of memory material connected by horizontal wires. There's a lot more technical details to how it works, but essentially, its design allows 3D Crosspoint to pack more memory into less space and reach speeds hundreds of times faster than NAND flash, with much lower latency. It's also non-volatile, meaning it can keep information stored even when it loses power, unlike DRAM, which is volatile memory. And it has a terrible attitude. Intel introduced this technology with two lines of products, Optane Data Center SSDs led by the DCP4800X and Optane M.2 memory modules which we have here. The P4800X comes in 375GB, 750GB, and 1.5TB versions and can serve as persistent storage or as a massive bank of memory, which means that data centers could get a lot more memory for their money than if they were buying traditional DRAM. The Optane memory modules come in 16GB and 32GB versions for 50 and 80 bucks US respectively and can also be used as either long-term storage or for cache memory, but as the low capacities indicate, they're intended to be used as cache for a hard drive or SSHD. Using them for this purpose can greatly reduce the time it takes to boot your PC and load up programs or games. Now, as I said, Intel Optane has been out for a while, so there are a million benchmarks out there for this already, and what those show is that systems with a hard drive as a boot drive benefit hugely from Intel Optane, reaching close to or equivalent speeds to that of SSDs, particularly after the system has gone through the cycle a few times. As in, once you've booted the PC or loaded a game two or three times, then you'll see the biggest benefits since the Optane drive will have loaded that information into memory by then. With SSHDs, meaning a hard drive with some solid state cache, the benefit isn't as high, but it's definitely there. Our friends at Hardware Canucks saw an overall performance increase of 87%, although sequential read speeds were slightly lower. With an SSD for a boot drive, adding Optane memory gets you equivalent or even slower performance depending on the strength of the SSD. So even Optane memory itself would tell you not to do that. It's a humble little drive. Now, this obviously brings up an interesting question. How many people out there are actually using hard drives as their boot drive? Maybe there's some old systems out there, and for those PCs, adding an Optane memory module would supercharge its performance, but Optane is only compatible with Z270 systems or later. Okay, so what about new budget gaming builds? The value is certainly there. Get a decent hard drive, slap the 16 gigabyte Optane module in, and you'll be getting SSD-like speeds with the capacity of a hard drive. Optane has super low power consumption and latency, so it would also be perfect for notebooks and business PCs. But there are some problems with this iteration of Optane. For one, you can't decide what gets loaded into the cache. It'll learn what you use the most and adjust things, but it would be great to be able to choose yourself. It also only accelerates the boot drive, so if you have multiple drives, which enthusiasts tend to have, you won't see any performance increase with those. And specifically, the problem with the 32 gig version is, for a few more dollars you could get a 200 plus gigabyte SSD and get better performance with plenty of room for a number of games, and you could throw a hard drive in for extra storage if you really wanted to. But hold on a second, this isn't all there is to Optane. 
Intel started their push for 3D Crosspoint with these products, but there are more enthusiast and consumer-oriented options on the horizon. Intel is expected to introduce DIMMs to use in place of DRAM. 3D Crosspoint is slightly slower than DRAM, but these DIMMs would be a lot cheaper for much higher capacities. Intel also plans to offer straight-up SSDs eventually, which will be quite expensive at launch, but have the potential to really shake up the market. Tom's Hardware also seems to think that the quality of flash memory has gone down in recent years, as OEMs focus on decreasing costs rather than increasing performance, and therefore an Intel Optane module paired with a hard drive may be a better option than buying a large capacity SSD. But I think Tom's Hardware might be run by Tom from MySpace, so I don't know if I'd trust that guy. And we've already seen some products with Optane built in, like the ASUS VivoBook Pro, which debuted at CES and will retail for $799 US. Now, with all that said, who should buy Intel Optane? It's only compatible with Z270 and forward, so if you have an existing PC based on an older chipset and you're just looking for an easy upgrade, no, uh, not you. It's not faster than an SSD, so if you aren't planning on replacing your boot SSD anytime soon, then not you either. If you're looking into building a new PC and you're on a tight budget, well, it's definitely an option. SSD speeds for the things you do the most, plus terabytes of capacity. Plus, if you do already have an SSD, you could use an Optane and hard drive for boot and use the SSD as extra storage. That way you'd have two drives with SSD speeds. In the end, it comes down to your specific situation. Optane has just entered the market and it's still finding its place. Soon we'll see more notebooks and pre-built PCs coming out with Optane to keep power consumption and price down, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, but for now, I'd keep my ear to the ground because I'd say things will get interesting down the line. But that is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey, tell you what, you can click here to watch our previous videos in this playlist. Those are guides and tutorials. If you want to find out our innermost thoughts and feelings, follow us on Twitter. Those are our handles. And if you like the cut of our jib, you can give this video a like. A comment below to enter our Fans with Benefits monthly giveaway. And subscribe if you're a subscribing type of person. I'll see you later.